G'day, I'm James and welcome to Graphing Rational Functions Part 2 in the 21st century. So suppose I'm given one that this one here might be a little bit beyond the standard curriculum. I don't know, it depends, depends on your curriculum. Please sketch a graph of this rational expression, this rational equation. Y equals x cubed plus 1 all over x. And okay, obviously if this is just the goal to get the graph, be a 21st century citizen, go straight to some graphing calculator or something. Great. So that's the goal to get the picture. But the goal here is obviously about the thinking, developing the confidence to solve problems. And you know, I don't really know what to do on this one. Um, otherwise, I'm just going to have to flail for a little bit, just try stuff and just hope for the best for a while. And I'm not quite sure what to do, but just one thing, one thing does seem compelling to me. Um, I can't help but notice I've got a very simple denominator this time. Maybe I'll just go x cubed over x plus 1 over x. Because last time we did the graph of, one of, one of y equals 1 over x, maybe that will be informative. So I could rewrite this as x cubed over x, x squared plus 1 over x. Ooh, ooh, I look at that and think, okay, okay. Don't really know what to do, but I've now got two very familiar formulas. I know what the graph of y equals x squared looks like, and I know what the graph of y equals 1 over x looks like. Surely I can somehow like piece something together from that information. All right, this is the beautiful art of graphing rational expressions. It's not about following a formula. I'm sure you've probably given some steps to follow. I think it's much more exciting and much more interesting and much more informative for our 21st century brains just to try to see if we can just use common sense and get somewhere. Be wrong a few times, get nowhere a few times, follow red herrings, whatever, but I bet we'll get there. I mean, I can't help, and that x squared, I can't help but want to draw that, because that one is so familiar. I mean, these things are scary. If I drew the graph of y equals x squared, I know I get a lovely symmetrical, basically like a u-shaped type curve. Great. Uh, but I've got this graph plus that, plus that. Um, oh, so what, what have I got? I know that zero is bad for this formula, so I know that zero is still a danger zone. So x equals zero is don't go there, don't go near zero x equals zero is bad for this version of the formula, it's also bad for that version of the formula, just don't go through zero. So that's a danger zone. So I know I've got that, so something weird is going on. But x squared plus one over x, think about it, think about it. If I've got like a really big value of x, like x is a million, this would be y equals x squared, a million squared plus one millionth. If x is a billion, it'd be a billion squared plus a billionth. Y equals, uh, basically, actually, if x is really big, this is going to be so tiny, I basically have y equals x squared, what well, that number is, plus a tiny smidgen more. So I can tell right now, for x really big, this formula wants to basically be the x squared graph, this x squared graph plus a smidgen more. It wants to sit just above, I'll do it in pink, it wants to sit just above this graph, but wants to become more and more like it for very big uh, positive values of x. Yeah? A million squared plus a millionth, tiny bit more than a millionth. A billion squared plus a billionth, okay, just above. Trillion squared plus a trillionth, just above. It wants to be just hugging the y equals x squared graph for big positive values. Amazing! Um, I will let the other extreme, y equals uh, like negative a million, negative a billion, negative a trillion, x squared plus negative a billionth, negative a trillionth, negative a billionth. So it's just under a little bit x squared plus a small negative amount. So here it just wants to be uh, just under the y equals x squared graph for very huge negative values of x. So my graph is doing something weird. I'm st I still don't know what it's doing, but wow, okay. It wants to hug the y equals x squared graph at least at the extreme values. What else can I do? What else can I do here? Um, okay, well, let's, let's, let's just, I'm playing. I don't know what I'm doing. Let's try right near the danger zone. If x is like 0.1 or 0.01 or 0.001, just to the right of the danger zone, what sort of values come out? Well, 0.1 squared or 0.01 squared or 0.001 squared is really close to zero, plus one over 0.1 or one over 0.01 or one over 0.001. It basically wants to be something close to zero plus a big number. One over 0.1 is 10. One over 0.01 is 100. One over 0.001 is 1,000. Small number plus 1,000, it really wants to be big and positive. It wants to be big and positive, just to the right of the danger zone. So the graph must be, I can kind of see it must be doing something weird like this. I'm just guessing on the right. Oh my goodness, this is bizarre. This is bizarre. Okay, what about just to the left of the danger zone? Like x equals negative 0.1, negative 0.01, negative 0.001. Uh, negative point one squared, negative point zero one squared, negative point zero zero one squared. All that be really close to zero plus one over negative point one, negative tenth, negative ten. One over negative point oh one, negative hundred. Oh, negative a thousand, negative a million. It wants to be something really close to zero minus a big number. It really wants to go down. Whoa. 
Do you know what? I'm basically just plotting points. There's nothing wrong with plotting points. I should put those points in my head and worked it out and see it has to do something like this. So it looks like the graph wants to do something if I connect the, the pieces I've got, must be something like that. There is a crazy graph. But I bet I can even figure out where it crosses the x-axis. When does y equal zero? Well, to get y equals zero, I guess I want that numerator to be zero, and I bet you can see negative one does the trick. This pink is the graph of this rational expression. And I don't know if you use this language, but you can actually say, this rational expression has the parabola y equals x squared as an asymptote. Most school curricula have asymptotes be these straight lines, you know, they have like a horizontal asymptote or a vertical asymptote or maybe even a diagonal asymptote. Actually, you can also have like a parabolic asymptote. You can have all sorts of weird asymptotes. It's what the graph wants to hug as you get to the extreme values. That's called an asymptote. This graph wants to hug the y equals x squared graph at the extreme values. Therefore, that quadratic y equals x squared is an asymptote for this rational expression. Crazy. All right. Now, of course, I've, I've got 30, 40 years of experience thinking on these things uh, than you do. I'm a mathematician, so I've been my brain went to this pretty quickly. But, you know, I bet as you practice this over and over again, I bet you could be given some weird expressions and you can just figure out by using common sense, plotting some points either side of the danger zones or plotting some extreme values, you could probably actually start working out how to graph rational expressions on your own using the powers of skills of thinking. Thinking that's actually relevant for the 21st century. No one actually cares what these graphs look like. That's not the point. It's the thinking about how to get to those graphs that's actually a kind of interesting exercise, great for sharpening one's problem-solving skills. It's actually kind of good stuff when set in the right light.